Greetings and salutations, all you absolutely beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Online here. The Mark you with you these were a little late to the party from the weekend, but we'll recap all the madness that was, and there's nowhere better, maybe nowhere sadder to start than the biggest disappointment of the weekend and one of the biggest disappointments of the entire calendar year and that is this star-studded super team of a roster from cloud nine not even making the world championship mark you know i knew where you were going with it and i was still hoping that you were talking about jdg over in the lpl i was uh, please 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 don't be cloud nine it is Cloud9. Unfortunately, we've got to talk about losing to a series against 100 Thieves in the LCS. And no worlds for Cloud9. No worlds for JoJo Pyun. No worlds for Berserker. Oh, boy. <sighs> and obviously, you know, the dominoes that will fall with this roster fallout going forward, we'll get to. But how about now, even if you go back to spring when Fudge was on the roster, this team went 1-4. and four. In playoffs, they got a single series win against the 100 Thieves and lost four out of five of these other best of matches. The best teams are supposed to have a level up when things are on the line. You saw this squad after game three in the most recent series against the 100 Thieves. They looked tilted. They looked broken. Obviously, the weight of being such massive favorites on the split and especially in this series against the 100 Thieves clearly weighed on the squad. And it was also clearly a situation where it looked like a team overlooking their opponent was the way that it felt when the series lined up against the 100 Thieves. This was a cloud nine that felt they were destined. They deserved, they had already earned that next trip forward that they of course are destined to face off against a fly quest, against a team liquid. This is our zone. We are the elite of this region. And you fall, you stumble, you fall flat on your face. This was about as ugly as it gets for a bad performance in a playoff series by one of these top teams. This is a monumental failure for this organization, for these five members that were playing. There's a lot to really discuss and, and you know, uh, look through and see what type of team can come out of this next year for Cloud9, because that's certainly going to be one that is under the microscope. Yeah, I mean, guys like Berserker and Thanatos are here because it's easier to make worlds than being a top four team uh, in the LCK. And now they're both going to be watching the event from home. We know what the scrim culture has been like, well, in the LCS as a whole, but specifically Cloud9 with JoJo and Blabber, maybe running it down a little bit in scrims, which is, you know, ah, funny, good times. That's the characters of these guys. But now a full year and the level that jojo was playing at at this series and you're kind of like it's he's not a rookie anymore it's not that cutesy for fun kind of stuff it's just it's disappointing now it, it's one of those situations where you kind of you know you have something you when you get a screw you screw it down you tighten it everything's all secure you're feeling good and then you go back the next day and it's loosey-goosey all over again what is this you're, that's kind of how you're feeling about Jojo Pyeon. This was supposed to be a year where the screws got tightened down just a little bit, you know, professionalized, really taken to the next level on an organization like Cloud9. And it's been anything but that from him individually. I think we can see when you're talking about the level of performance and skill that he has, the skill is there. That signs those glimpses. I don't think that's gone away. The actual focus, the preparation, the seriousness, all these other X factors that go into it, they're not there for someone like Jojo Pian. And that was costly time after time after time in this series with 100 Thieves identifying that and punishing it like crazy. My man, you're taking LeBlanc into Maokai Rel. That is about as a top tier of a duo combo that I don't want to go into on a champion like LeBlanc that wants to dip, dive, duck into any type of team fight and get onto that carry, a Maokai and LeBlanc waiting for you as you as you dip, dive in, that's not what you want to see. Crazy that it got pulled out a second time in this series, too. I know he reverts back to actually picking up Flash the second time he plays it, but yeah, just time and time again on these fights, he's stepping a little bit too far forward, even when it wasn't on the LeBlanc on some quirky games, too. He's getting caught out and... Listen, I know we harp on TSM 
of old. Their performances at Worlds being some of the most disappointing LCS runs ever. But at least they were at Worlds disappointing. This series felt like peak LCS at Worlds where they look scared and nervous, hesitant to play the way they normally play, but were still domestic. The fact that this team was so hyped up in both spring and even more hyped up in summer to not get to Worlds, the only comparable one is 2020 Cloud9. They'd also failed to make Worlds after dominating for a full year. And people are, are going to be more lenient on, you know, some of these for fun, silly type of attitudes or approaches to things when you are picking up those wins. When it is a G2 esports that struggles, fumbles, you know, gets into a slump, but can recover, find it miraculously and always gets it done when it is a best of type of series. You sound the complete opposite of that with this Cloud9 team this time around. And I think a lot of people thought that, okay, it had been patched up enough with Reaper coming over and the changes in performance that we did get to see throughout the regular season. I think a little bit unfair for Cloud9 in the sense of their scheduling where you didn't get that immediate tough test of a Team Liquid, of a FlyQuest early enough in the split to say, you know what, maybe there are some things that we do need to take a little more seriously or approach in this type of manner because we aren't this ultimate giga team that we thought we were going to be this year never happened for cloud nine. And yes, they find themselves on the sideline as the LCS is going to be pretty excited still about who you're sending to worlds. Yeah. And listen, a hundred thieves, 100% deserved outperformed. were fantastic. Quid continues to be a star in the LCS. Tomo has brought this team to an entirely different level uh, with that squad. But Cloud9, it almost feels like they're the inverse of what NRG was last year, which was, you know, a sum greater than its parts. This team just didn't click together and were better individually than five as a, as a team, which is a recipe for uh, not doing well at this game. Yeah, and I, I think just regardless, there has to be a way that you change this lineup moving into next year. Whether that's going to be a forced hand type of situation with someone like Thanatos or Berserker, as you laid out, where they're here because they view this as their path towards an international appearance, or if it's going to be something where you really do take a serious look at players like Vulcan, like Blabber, are they past their you know best uh, best performance date type of situation? Even taking a look at Jojo Pyun, even as fresh and new as that is, and the prospect and potential that he presents the results and performance that is there is not the type of level that is acceptable yeah jojo stocks at an all-time low even though he's only been around a couple of years not the resurgent year we were expecting to have on this cloud nine roster you alluded to the other disappointment of the weekend that is of course jdg the final showdown for that fourth seed in the lpl and it's Weibo Gaming, the frauds themselves, denying, shedding all allegations. The finalists from last year's Worlds are returning, surviving the ludicrous schedule of losing 0-3 in finals, having to play the next day against LNG, proceeding to get swept again, and somehow bounce back to have an immaculate performance against JDG. It, that's so unfair. <laughs> it's just... Brutal. Yep, you lost in the finals to the Giga Team VLG right back out there. Get on that stage the next day against LNG. It's not even about the power level or seriousness of a match against LNG. It's the fact of you just got blasted by BLG. Now go earn your spot for Worlds get against blasted LNG. Again. Your son get blasted again. And thankfully, it doesn't happen one more time. Weibo gets the bounce back. They secure that final spot for Worlds for the LPL. And yes, deny Ruler and JDG from taking a trip to Worlds. Crazy to go from the golden year that was for JDG to be denied by Faker at Worlds. And then all of a sudden, and now here we are sitting out, missing out. Golden year to golden popcorn on the couch watching from home. Turns out 369 and Knight, pretty important players uh, to a roster because Yagao was a little bit gapped by Mr. Zhao Hu in this series. And 
I truly felt bad. Most games in this series, Ruler is legit making highlight reel plays. Even, even in games where the other team's beaten down on the Nexus, he's getting 1v2 solo kills on both of them, just trying his best to drag JDG back to a world championship, but it ends up being the first time Ruler loses in a gauntlet run. Ooh, oh, that's a rough one to take. Uh, for for you, Gao, it almost feels like this is kind of the Cinderella pumpkin turns into a carriage type of thing, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, it's it's midnight, guys. We've got a pumpkin on our hands in the mid lane from you, Gao. Uh, he has had better years, is one of the way to look at it, but definitely a down year from him in this important situation. We're going from night to you, Gao. You needed not to have that down year from him. You have that. Obviously, the whole situation with Fondre and Shear, as we've talked about in that top side, this was uh, you know, kind of under the radar to a lot of people. Missing had a massive regression in his own individual performance, whether that's talking about the duo synergy with Ruler in that lane or out of that lane, trying to make anything happen. I think it was off the mark for him this year. JDG, got to make some tweaks. They know that they've got the checkbook. They've got the money to make it happen in the LPL. That's going to be important because I think we can, you know, as things fall into place as they are, as we move into this later part of the year, we are starting to see possibilities, openings, chances on different type of rosters and where they might try to move for next year. Ruler is absolutely going to be one of those guys that a lot of teams would love to have conversation with. JDG can end those conversations if they open up the money bank for him. Yeah, I feel like Kanavi and Ruler, they're 1A, 1B, what they build this team around, but I imagine... Much like Cloud9, there's going to be a lot of changes coming uh, for JDG. So Weibo joins LNG and BLGTS to round out the top four. How about we've got a full, almost old RNG lineup going to Worlds with Breathe, Bin, Xiaohu, Gala, and Wei. Everybody but Ming from this MSI champion RNG squad going to be at Worlds. RNG might have faded from the forefront of the LPL, but still feeling those effects, still feeling the lineage of that this great organization and what they've gone through. I'm excited. I think that these are great teams for the LPL to be representing. And I think that really reasonably, other than I think the only one you could argue is swapping maybe Weibo and LNG, depending on how you feel about the two of them. That trio in that, or that quad, in that order, that's what you want for the LPL to be sending to this tournament. And I, I'm excited for people to criminally underrate top esports because they kind of, you know, it didn't feel great about them and how their summer split closed out. But no question to me that we're going to see them at, you know, maybe a, a top five team at this event at worst. They're going to feel a lot like a number one seed. That's what I've, I've got my guess on for a top esports. There's certain times where, you know, you're looking at that number two seed from the LCK, the LPL, maybe occasionally the LEC can kind of sneak in there type of thing, whatever. You're looking at that number two seed and you're trying to judge. Are you more like a two? Are you more like a three? Maybe you're more like that one. And if you're more like that one, that's a danger zone for a lot of teams. Top esports will represent that for me. And the LCK might have three teams feeling like a top seed <laughs> headed toward uh, this world championship. The only top seed coming out of EU because all roads run through caps. G2. How many times this year did we talk about, ooh, slumping G2 heading into playoffs? They're looking weak. They're bleeding. This is the time for the rest of the LEC to step in. Well, now we're sitting here all four titles in 2024 going the way of G2. It was just another uh, experience of them being far leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else in EU when it comes to objective play and macro game knowledge. If you weren't prepared for this, that's on you. As we've talked about this many times throughout the various ups and downs of G2 this year, Last year, the year before that, the year after, all the way back when you go through this team. And every single time it gets brought up to a question of, is this the real problem or is this just G2 figuring things out until we get to the end and they are the champions all said and done? There we are. It is G2 as the champions all said and done at the very end of it. Yes, the slumps, they didn't matter. None of these type of things. I think there is some world where you can talk about those struggles and disappointments and see it leading to what you got 
this weekend. And one of the big ones I want to look at is Hansama down in the bottom lane. I think that's certainly one of the areas that was also part of the struggles, part of not operating at that full type of level that we saw throughout this split. No mistaking in these best of type of situations, he stepped up big time and was a consistent, reliable, big time damage threat for this G2 machine. Yeah, especially when, you know, for the better part of the year, Noah has kind of been looked at as the better ADC if you were having them uh, head to head. Wasn't the case in this series. How about now this last 16 domestic finals in the LEC? G2 has been there for 13 of them they've only missed finals three times and they've won 12 out of those 13 combine that with the fact that seven of the last 10 mvps of the whole league have come from g2 and the only team that has a dynasty matching level domestically is t1 that's it G2 is like that goaded aunt or uncle or maybe godfather or whatever that is always there. You got a music recital, you got a graduation from preschool, the whatever. Flying happens. across the country to come. They're there, they're taking pics, they're everything. They're their number one supporter. G2 is there for the LEC. They got your backs. They will always be there in the finals. Incredible, incredible run from this organization. And again, continued with long-standing players like Caps that we talk about. Um, this is really one of those runs again where you can continue to praise G2 and understand there are still serious issues, serious concerns when you get to, you know, important matchups or, or certain situations that you can see in the, in the future for an international event coming towards us, focusing in on the LEC and getting this accomplishment once again. I don't think you can just simply sweep under the rug as, as just another G2 championship. This is still something that should be acknowledged and celebrated for what they were able to do. And, you know, talk about whatever power level you're thinking of the LEC. This is an international event on home turf. G2, obviously, traditionally doing the heavy lifting internationally for Europe. But uh, they're obviously going to be looked to as the flag bearers for all of EU at uh, this year's World Championship. And we'll be looking for a little bit of redemption after what happened last year against the NRG boys. G2 will not be playing in the play-in stage, but we did get our draw, even though not all the teams are fully finalized. This is kind of the similar format uh, to what we got last year at Worlds, of course. And immediately, matchups that you're going to be drawn to is, of course, Rainbow 7 against that three seed from the LCS, which unfortunately means we will be denied Summit versus APA because Team Liquid has already clinched top two. But he's going to try and get his revenge against the LCS. Darn it. Uh, Summit Summit does his part. He holds up his end of the bargain. APA's got to go out there and he's got to exceed it. He's got to go <sighs> beyond the limit and take Team Liquid to number one in the LCS. Not He'll probably play up. against the Ziggs, though. <laughs> Oh, he'll play against a six. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yikes. Don't want to think about that one. But yes, that is going to be a matchup. And on the other side, the LEC's Mad Lions, they get a prime matchup against good old friend PSG. Yeah, so uh, obviously, again, you kind of have the bonus lives in this play stage. So uh, MGK matches up against Viking Esports to kick things off. The two seed from the VCS. But at some point, I mean, I guess they don't have to beat PSG. But PSG is going to be the favorites on that side of the bracket, even in a head-to-head -head against Mad Lions Koi, because they absolutely obliterated the PCS for a second straight split. Yeah, that PSG team is really one of them that is scary. And again took care of business domestically with that full eyes focus towards going to the world championship and setting another chance to take down some of these big teams like Ad Lions Koi waiting for them in one of these situations. I think the way that these, you know, the, the draw worked out for the play in stage is gonna be again, one of the more exciting parts of this world championship. I think that the drama that it creates and the type of storylines that we get coming out of it absolutely the best that it can be for a playing stage before we get to that swiss stage and um obviously bad lions and an international event are synonymous with people being disappointed even if they're losing to psg let's say they get to that winner side they've got to beat viking esports and the top seed out of the cb lol if mdk is unable to beat those two squads then yeah they don't deserve to be at the main event and i gotta see from el yoya 
he's got to put on the big dad pants. He's got to be the boss for this Mad Lions Koi team and take that leading charge and set the tone for a lot of these younger players on the lineup when they're stepping into this world situation and, you know, kind of is that conversation around Mad Lions Koi. I think he needs to grab the reins of this team as the leader and really show it at, at this event. So first pick Ivern for uh, in all these <laughs> matchups, right? No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, he's pretty great at Ivern, but obviously harder to be in the driver's seat uh, when you're pulling off that Ivern. And then, of course, assuming Gam is kind of the other favorite on the other side, any time the VCS and Gam in particular is matching up against the LCS, it's always a good time. And even last year at Worlds, remember, they were beating up on BDS as well. Uh, and uh, it's one of those ones where they had been... You know, disappointing a couple years, a couple appearances before that, and then started out not so great at that event and then turned it on and started to show the gam that you talk about, the gam that we have been fearful of talking about when we pre preview these type of play in events of what they can represent. Looking, you know, it's tough to get more of a less, uh, I'll say, a completely accurate read on the VCS at this point after all the turmoil that we've been through with that region and, and the whole situation there but one of the consistents is of course gam's performance and what you get from them so still expecting that from them at the international level yeah six titles in a row setting a vcs record uh were the gam boys but obviously gam the lcs third seed mdk and psg gonna be the pretty sizable favorites to be the four squads advancing from play-ins but Every single year, there's at least one series in the playing stage that uh, does not go the way you expect. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Someone's going to drop the ball, and that will either be the LCS or the LEC. It always heck, seems to be one of them, right? It can even be a team like PSG dropping oh. the ball. It's all possible in this type of playing situation, especially given the format. That's what I'm excited about. You get a couple spicy picks that can maybe start to emerge as we talk about, right? The meta for the event start to think this playing stage is the very beginning type of chance to make that type of form and take these champions to the next level. Yeah, that's when you see what the scrim strategies have been as they translate over to that main stage. But we still got some regionals to finish up before then. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out as always.